Hi everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to kick off the series on how to build a Pennsylvania Railroad Golden Glow Headlight Replica. Uh, before we get really involved in starting the build, I wanted to take a couple videos and go over kind of the history of the headlights, what replaced them, why we're replacing them, how we're going to replace them, and what parts I keep from the original headlight and I use in the reproductions. So, first things first to kick off the video, uh, the Pennsylvania Railroad used Golden Glow headlights. I have here, this is the rear backup light off the H10's tender, and I always like to keep one of them intact so I can copy it to the best I can. Uh, these headlights were used from as early as I can tell, around the 1910s, 1915, all the way up through to the 40s. And some of them even went past that. Uh, I found through looking through documents that Pennsylvania Railroad didn't actually make these headlights. They had them built to their specifications from a company called ESCO that was based out of Philadelphia. And they called this series of headlight Golden Glow. Uh, these headlights were replaced with the bullet style cast headlights starting in the 40s. And while I haven't actually found information as to why they, why they did it specifically, my thought is that these headlights, by the time the 40s rolled around, some of them were 25 years old, these didn't hold up too well in the elements. The barrels of these, as I'll show you, are very, very thin. They're about 1 16th thick. Now, most of the time, a locomotive's headlight is going to be up in front of the smoke box area. With all the soot falling from the smoke produced from burning the coal, I have a feeling that over time, these didn't hold up too well. And you'll see with this headlight specifically why these have to be rebuilt. I opened up the H10's headlight and I wanted to do an in-depth kind of review of what we're dealing with with these headlights when we get them most of the time. So these had a problem. First things first, they didn't have any way for rainwater to drain out typically. They didn't have like a dedicated hole as they were built. Uh, also, you have a lot of areas for water to get in. So water can get in from the side number plates and it can get in through the front seal as well. And it can also get in through the back where the screws are to mount the electrical hardware for the light itself. You can see that on this one, the barrel is almost rotten away right here. This is actually made up of three pieces of metal. There's the barrel, then there's a plate that goes on top to kind of support this, and then this piece of metal here kind of acts as like a three-point harness for this hardware to mount the bulb itself. So most of the time, these are pretty well shot. There's even also on the outside, you can see there should be a gasket that runs around the perimeter of the headlight. So from a restoration standpoint, redoing one of these headlights is not worth it because by the time I cut everything away, it's just easier for me to, to re-roll a barrel. So on the sides of the headlight, they have the number plates to illuminate and tell you which locomotive it is, depending on if they're in the front or the rear. A lot of problems we have with these headlights, and you can see here, they like to split and break apart. So between the inside of this rotting and these breaking, you can see this one here too, this has a broken piece on the bottom here. The actual bracket that makes it flip back and forth up here is completely broken. And then down here, you can see daylight coming through the inside of this. So between all those factors, it doesn't pay for us to fix these as they are. It's just easier to rebuild. One of the benefits about working at a museum where we have archives is that sometimes we have access to documents that tremendously help us in our restoration efforts. So here we were able to pull up an original 
drawing of one of these Golden Glow headlights dating from around 1920. Uh, it gives us all the information we need to reproduce them. And I'm going to walk through kind of what dimensions I'm looking for that's going to help me project this out and actually roll the barrel and find certain lines and certain widths and heights of the metal that we need to reproduce it. These can be daunting. I always feel with blueprints, it helps me the best if I have one, like a headlight next to me and I can reference the blueprint at the same time. Obviously, that's not always possible, but when I'm doing, when I did this, if I didn't have the headlight in conjunction with this, I would have never been able to make a reproduction headlight. So any frequent viewer of the channels has obviously seen this headlight before. This is on the tender of the V6 that we're finishing up. I just want to show everybody kind of like what a final product of what we're going to do looks like. I built this guy about eight months ago. And when we do it, we try to do it 100%. So if you open this, we have the lens in here, but we also have a seal that actually is a um, wood stove door seal. And at the same time, we have new cast sides of the door that we use for the reproduction purposes. There's also a gasket inside here too, and I'll zoom in and show what the guts of one of these reproductions looks like. Here's what the inside of one of the reproduction headlights looks like. Uh, we have the mechanism here that allows you to turn the bulb. We have the original terminal board for the electric coming into it. It's already wired and ready to go. We have a new strap to secure the middle of the headlight, a new barrel, and new side doors. And you can see our nice shiny lens, but this is what our end result is gonna look like. So that was an introduction to the channel's Making a Headlight series. On the next video, you can look forward to me starting the process of pulling the parts out of a headlight that I need to use when I remake one. We're going to discuss that and we're going to get into a little bit of templates and what I use to streamline the process because I have to make seven of them. You might have seen this guy hanging out in some of my videos and throughout this video. This is a headlight that's about 60% done that I started. I like to have one or two of them that I'm making at all times in case I run into something where I don't have anything to do that day and I need something to work on. I'm going to start a fresh one for the video, but you might see this guy poke in and out. Thank you for joining me and have a good one.